Do you have nasal obstruction? Do you think you might have a deviated nasal septum? Well, if you do, watch this video to find out whether you'll benefit from a septoplasty or a septorhinoplasty. Hi, I'm Dr. Valerie Tay from the Aspire Ear, Nose, Throat and Snoring Clinic. Today, we're here to talk to you about septoplasty and septorhinoplasty. The nasal septum is a structure that divides the left and right side of your nostrils. You might think that your nose is only this pyramidal structure you see on your face, but it actually extends backwards about two to three inches. So your septum actually runs all the way back. Now, many, many patients actually have breathing problems and it's typically related to a deviated nasal septum. That means that your nasal septum is crooked or curved. Now, if you're lucky and your nasal septum is only deviated on the inside and it's not affecting the external structure of the nose, then a septoplasty, which is to reshape the septum, is sufficient for you. But if you notice that your, the external structure of your nose is deviated or if you've had previous injury, then you will require a septorhinoplasty because we need to change the shape of the external structure of your nose as well to improve your breathing. Now, for a deviated septum, most patients may notice that they can't breathe so well and that might be more on one side than the other. The other symptom that patients tell me is that when they lie down on one side at night, that on that side, they can't breathe so well but if they turn and they lie on the opposite side, then they can breathe very well. And that's because they, when they lie on the side to which the septum is deviated, it completely obstructs and then they can't breathe so well anymore. The other thing which patients may notice is that if they look into a mirror and their septum is very severely deviated, they may actually be able to see the, the, the frontmost part of the septum being deviated as well. A septoplasty and septorhinoplasty, they're both done under general anesthesia, but the septoplasty is slightly less involved and it's less invasive in a way because it, everything is done through the nose. There's no external incisions on the outside. And post-operatively, there also is no swelling of the external structure of the nose. Now, because the septorhinoplasty, by its name, involves reshaping the nasal pyramid, the structure that you see on the outside. So there will be more bruising, more swelling post-operatively compared to the septoplasty. For a septoplasty, the risks would include post-operative nasal obstruction, post-operative bleeding. These are the most common ones. Rarer complications would include a change of the shape of the nose and that's because of where uh, the septum being quite weak and if we actually remove too much of the supporting structures then that would result in what we call a saddle nose where the, the, the nose actually dips a little bit but that is very uncommon because we are very careful not to destabilize a nose which is uh, weak or where the cartilage is fairly thin but because the septorhinoplasty procedure is more technically demanding. There are other complications that can include bruising of the face, the healing may take some time, so there's more swelling of the nose that can last more than a couple of months. Patients may be unhappy with the appearance of how the, sh the shape has changed. Patients may also find that even after the surgery, they can't breathe as well as they would have liked. So these are some of the things that patients must be aware of before they undertake the surgery.